Uh, good evening. We will call the March 17th uh, Common Council meeting to order. I'll ask our clerk to call the roll. Alderperson Lysak. Here. May. Here. Frankie's excused. Uh, Rote. Here. Steph Stefanski. Here. Uh, Vitali. Here. Weigel. Here. Barzak. Here. Shapleski. Here. And Haas. Here. That's nine present. We have a uh, quorum. Please rise and join us in the pledge, which will be led by Alderman Lysak. Moving to item D, we have two public hearings this evening. Um, I will ask the clerk to read public hearing number one. Resolution to confirm and adopt the report of the city engineer containing the schedule of proposed assessments for improvement of South 94th Street from West Greenfield Avenue to West Orchard Street, South 96th Street from West Greenfield Avenue to West Lapham Street, and South 97th Street from West Orchard Place to West Lapham Street by minor asphalt resurfacing Miscellaneous sidewalk report, repair, miscellaneous driveway repair, storm sewer, storm sewer relay, sanitary sewer relay, water main relay, and utility adjustments. Mr. Daniels. Thank you, Mayor Devine. Okay, this is the public hearing for 94th, 96th, 7th, as the clerk said. Here's the procedures for tonight. I'll discuss the cope, scope and the cost. We'll discuss assessment rates, methods of payment, uh, we'll have a time for comments or questions from council and citizens. Uh, then it will be referred to the Public Works Committee and may be referred back here tonight for a final vote later tonight. So here's the first street, 94th Street from Greenfield to Orchard, uh, 96th Street from Greenfield to Lapham, and 97th Street. We're actually going to stop <clears throat> up here at Orchard Place. Uh, I think there was some confusion. People thought we were stopping at Orchard Street, but we're actually gonna stop up here at Orchard Place. We are gonna do some water main work up here as well, all the way up to Greenfield. So we're doing most of that street. Here's what the street looks like right now. This was paved with asphalt in 1987, so it's 80, uh, 33 years old. Uh, far too many potholes to do any kind of maintenance on this anymore. 96th Street is uh, just as bad, if not worse. That was paved in 1988, a very severe pavement deterioration. And 97th Street is very similar, same year, 1988, 32 years old, very severely just deteriorated. Uh, there have been some questions about trucking on some of these streets. I guess I just wanna clarify that these streets have been bad for a long time. These pictures were taken in 19, uh, 2011, before the zoo interchange even started. Uh, and you can see they were, they should have been, they were ready to be done way back then. Uh, so the, the, these streets have been in need of repair for a very long time. Uh, we're also doing uh, some of the work under the road. We've had 19 water main breaks on 96th and 97th Street. So we are relaying some of that water main from 1952. Um, the homes on this, in this neighborhood already all have copper services, so we don't have to worry about lead. Uh, we are doing some new sanitary sewer on 94th, 96th, 97th. Uh, some of it was from 1932, some from 1952. Uh, the storm sewer is mostly in place and we're not touching that. We did do some traffic counts on all these streets. Uh, we didn't find a serious problem. 94th Street has about 285 cars. The 85th percentile speed's only 22. Uh, 96th and 97th were about the same, 400 to 447 cars per day. Uh, the 85th percentile speed was 24 to 27. T typically we'd say if it's under 28, it's not a serious problem, uh, but if anyone would like to uh, educate me on what I don't know, I would love to hear it and we can talk about some sort of traffic calming measures in that neighborhood. Um, this is what the road would look like when we're done, brand new asphalt road, minus the potholes. We're leaving the curb and gutter in place, repairing curb and gutter that needs to be done, repairing sidewalk, but for the most part, leaving that in place. So it's, it's a very quick job, uh, just replacing this part in the middle. Here is the cost of the project. Pavement, 267,000. Sanitary sewer, 275. 
a little bit of storm sewer, 40,000, and uh, a bunch of new water main for 227,000, so 809,000. Uh, here's where the funding is coming from. Uh, the water utility is paying for the water main, so that's 28%. The general fund is paying about 9%. Special assessments are paying about 24%. And the sanitary sewer is coming out of the sanitary sewer fund, 34%. And then just a little bit of water main work, like I said, coming out of the stormwater fund. Here's a sample residential special assessment, assuming a 40-foot lot. Uh, the assessment rate's $41.48, so the homeowner's cost would be $1,659. Uh, the bills for this would not be mailed out until March or so of 2021. Not 2020, but 2021. Uh, at that time, uh, assuming this typical bill, your first annual installment would be $232. If you have an escrow or something, it would be $19 a month. Uh, and then the 10th year in the year 2030 would pay $173 or about $14 a month. Why do we special assess? Uh, we have been doing this for over 110 years. Uh, and in the old days, the residents actually paid up to about 100% of the cost of the project because they alone were enjoying the unique benefit that this improvement was giving their property. On this project, like I said, the city is collecting 194,000 in special assessments. That's about 24% of the total cost. Uh, the assessment rate of $41 per foot is the same anywhere in the city, no matter how wide the street is or high, how high the traffic volumes are or how high the actual bid prices are. Everyone is treated equally with the same price per foot. Uh, and this has been around in Wisconsin for 110 years. It's been state law. Uh, and there have also been over 100 court cases that I'm aware of where it's been ruled to be a fair and equitable way of recouping the city's costs. Uh, special assessments are also the only way to ensure that tax-exempt schools, churches, charities, hospitals, county parks, and utilities, and railroads pay their fair share because nobody's exempt from special assessments. There are 430 properties in the city that don't pay any property taxes, and many of these tax-exempt schools, churches, hospitals, county parks are very large properties. They encompass 28% uh, of the city's land area and they only contribute to the city's costs through these special assessments. Likewise, businesses, corporations, and manufacturers pay a higher assessment rate because they have more traffic. So their rate is 51 to $62 per foot. And case in point, on this particular job, Greenfield Avenue Presbyterian Church is paying $10,000 because they have a very large piece of land uh, adjacent to 97th Street. Uh, to reinforce that, this map shows all the properties in the city that are tax exempt. You can actually see the, the churches over here, uh, right there. Uh, but these are all, these are the 28% of the city that's not paying taxes. This is, these are the people that we're getting, uh, the only funds we're getting is through the special assessments. This map shows all the properties, at least on the east end, that have actually paid a special assessment in the last 10 years. I'm just trying to point out that everyone is paying their fair share. Uh, a lot of these properties on the east side have actually paid for their street and their alley, uh, and many probably paid for their street multiple times over the past 100 years. So everyone is paying their fair share, and if you wait long enough, everyone in the city will pay a special assessment at some point. Uh, why do we charge interest? The city borrows these funds for this project. So the city is paying interest to the municipal bondholders over the next 10 years. So the city is merely passing these interest charges on to the residents who choose to, uh, to uh, sign up for the five or 10 year plan. So the city is not making a profit off of the interest. Um, there will be times when they won't be able to park on the street. Uh, we're, uh, we're staggering the work. I'll talk about that in a minute where we're gonna do one street at a time. So they'll be parking on nearby streets. Uh, if someone does have a disabled uh, parking sticker or license plate. Uh, we can accommodate that on a nearby street like on Lapham or Orchard. Uh, we could set up a, a reserved spot for those people so they don't have to walk as far. Uh, so they should let us know about that. Here's kind of a tentative schedule. Um, this is post coronavirus. So May, uh, May 13th, we would start advertising for bids from contractors. Uh, we would uh, open bids on May 27th. The council would award it on about June 2nd. 
Uh, we would anticipate that construction could probably start at the end of June on 94th Street. Like I said, we would hold off on 96th or 97th Street until the Little League Championship game in July, uh, if that happens. And then we would not let construction to take place simultaneously on 96th and 97th at the same time. We would stagger it so that one street's open while the other one's closed. Uh, and then all the work would hopefully be done by November of 2020. If not, there would be liquidated damages of $1,000 a day for any work that goes past that deadline. And I just want to make sure everyone's aware, if you go to our website, uh, you can get weekly construction and progress report updates. That's what they're called. That this is what the website looks like. It's halfway down the page. Uh, you can sign up. They come out about every week. And they would give you contact information, what's happening this week. Uh, and you, you can see all the projects we have. Or you can just focus on the one that you're worried about. Um, so I just want to make sure that we get the people signed up for that. It's a very good uh, source of information. We will send out a hard letter before the job starts, but this would uh, get you updated every week after that. So if there are any questions, I will entertain them now. Thank you. Mr. Daniels, are there any questions from the Common Council on public hearing number one? Seeing none. Anybody in the audience have questions on public hearing number one? We have no audience. <laughs> We will close public hearing number one, and I will ask the clerk to read public number two. Resolution for the vacation and discontinuance of a portion of South 59th Street City right-of-way between West National Avenue and West Greenfield Avenue. Mr. Chair. Thank you. This is the uh, subject area of uh, tonight's second public hearing. It's a portion of uh, South 59th Street between National and Greenfield Avenue. And um, there was a public hearing on this uh, matter back on the 21st of uh, January for uh, just for, uh, to authorize the staff to proceed with a publication of a notice to abutting property owners uh, on the 59th Street area. Um, the abutting, um, uh, Two abutting uses that would uh, uh, benefit directly from additional land area would be Kegel's Restaurant as well as the Public Table Restaurant on each side of 59th Street. Um, the approximate area is about 62 feet wide uh, uh, by 113 feet long. And um, in terms of the overall process, uh, in addition to that uh, introductory public hearing that we had back on the 21st, there was a planning commission meeting the, um, the next day on the 22nd, uh, followed by three consecutive notices within the official paper, um, and then uh, culminating tonight at uh, tonight's meeting for the uh, final decision. This is the uh, uh, bird's eye aerial view of uh, uh, looking south down 59th Street from National Avenue. Uh, you'll note uh, Kegel's uh, uh, restaurant on the west side of 59th, uh, public table on the east side. And then south of that, you have um, an alley followed by um, three residential, uh, low density residential homes on the east side of uh, 59th, um, an auto body shop, and a single family home on the west side of 59th, closer to Greenfield Avenue. This is the um, Engineering drawing prepared um, uh, back in December for this uh, for the hearing, and uh, basically just shows the technical specs of the uh, the area to be vacated. Um, and you can see on the right side just some uh, more recent pictures, and a uh, the use of the the street as it's been allowed um, in the past for um, uh, various events, a beer garden in the summertime, and an ice skating rink in the wintertime. Um, so it's been very successful. The partnership between the, uh, uh, the two restaurants on either side of the street, as well as uh, the city, is somewhat of a demonstration. Now, the um, uh, owners of, of those restaurants have uh, requested the, the street be vacated it has, uh, as a sponsor. Um, one of our older persons had sponsored this going forward. And so it, it is here tonight. The um, site concept that's been presented to um, the city uh, staff, including engineering, and and so on and planning um, is this one here that we show on the screen. You can see the kegels and public table in the uh, darker color. Those are the buildings on each side of 59th Street. 
National Avenue being on the right-hand side, uh, 59th um, <coughs> South. But what's the con concept is to basically make um, more of a year-round use of this portion of 59th Street. It is a very small segment of street. And in vacating this, it would become a taxable property. And each business would um, have roughly one half of 59th Street, the uh, west half being that of Kegels, the east half being that of the public table. And this co concept basically shows um, uh, some additional street trees being added um, within that, uh, if, if it were to be vacated, private, uh, private land area. Um, they could either be in the form of a raised planter or um, something that's actually um, planted um, soil amendments and so on within the uh, within the surface. Um, the um, applicants do intend to uh, uh, apply for an MMSD grant to um, in in the future remove um, existing pavement and replace it with pavers or similar stormwater surface uh, that would uh, uh, naturally attenuate the um, runoff into the uh, ground and into the, uh, you know, beneath the surface into an engineered soil. That's, that's a ways off yet. They have to, uh, they're applying for that grant. That would be probably two years from now, maybe a, actually definitely more than a year. But the immediate plan would just be to make use of the existing paved surface um, as, as you've seen over the past year. So this did be go, go before the plan commission on January 22nd and um, uh, plan commission did recommend approval. There was one, um, uh, since that time, there was one uh, uh, party objecting to the uh, closure. Um, and then at the last public hearing that we had, um, there were a number of people that had spoken in favor of it. So I'm um, here to answer any questions of the council um, at this point. Thank you. Any questions from the council on uh, public hearing number two? Mayor Devine. Alderman May. I quickly, and I apologize, Steve, if you touched on this. I was trying to pay attention closely here on this. Um, I'm fine with this, but there are utilities underneath that street. Will we have access agreements struck that if a uh, water main breaks underneath there or uh, that we're not, I mean, uh, we'd probably have to restore it and such, but we have access to get in and do those things. No trees are going to be planted over those areas. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the council? Mr. Mayor. Alderman Rote. I'm sure there's storm and sanitary in that street. Are we still be jetting them, cleaning them, cameraing them? I don't even know if cameraing is a <coughs> word. Taking pictures? It is now. <laughs> Rotisms. Yes. <coughs> yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any other questions from the Common Council? Mayor Devine. Alderman Weigel. Um, so this is currently city property that we're going to give to these two business owners who own the business owners own the adjacent properties also I, I know they do a kegels i'm pretty sure they do a public table yes um correct and so that's become taxable to them so they're going to see a change in their taxable value or that's what the correct. taxes yes. that they owe yeah, yeah. Okay. thank you thank you any other questions from the council Mr. Mayor. alderman vitale yeah i believe about the uh the underground uh, utility I, I think it was some discussions already uh, and, and i believe we still the city has the uh right away really to uh, do whatever needs to be done, you know? I mean, that's what I think we talk about it, whether it was in public works or uh, yeah. there was some discussions already. So, so so everything is fine. I mean, I talked to the uh, people south of that, you know, the uh, body shop and, and everybody's thrilled about it. They're, they're very happy about it. The residents, I mean, on that three houses, you know, they have no problem at all. I think they're, uh, something is good, you know? I. I when we had that cold spell, I mean, I see some of the uh, kids, and not kids, uh, grown up uh, young men, you know, in the 20, all, all graduate, I mean, uh, just uh, college uh, students, you know, uh, you know, they were about 25. I mean, they had a hell of a good time in that, by giggle, they really by the ice ring, you know. Uh, so, so to me, I think it's, it's a good for the area, you know, and for, the, for us, I think, for the uh, community just as well. Thank, Thank you. you Any other questions? Um, are there any questions from the audience that may be hiding out there? No? Okay, we will close public hearing number two. And we will go to, we'll go to item E, citizen participation. <laughs> Does anybody here wish to address the council under citizen yeah, participation? Here, I thought Peter. <laughs> <laughs> Alderman Rowe, you want to go back on? No. <laughs> we will close. 
We will close citizen participation. We'll go to item F. Our standing committees are meeting during recess. Those room numbers are listed on top of page two. Um, <clears throat> going to item G, the uh, mayor's report. I, I said it a little bit earlier during the committee of the whole, but the only thing I uh, want to touch on this evening, and I think the only thing I've been talking about for the past six days has been the, this virus, this coronavirus slash COVID-19. And I want to just take a minute once again to publicly thank everybody involved in adapting to this rapidly changing situation from our employees to our division and department heads, uh, specifically the ones that have been more directly involved and for people that gave up their weekends on conference calls and their evenings on conference calls. Um, and just the, the community in general, thank you for your, your patience as we try to get this message out. It has not been easy. There have been a lot of very difficult decisions and um, business owners as well. We understand where you're at and I think I can speak safely for everybody that we want to be as helpful as possible if you are operating in a different way, whether it's curbside food to go or carryouts any way that we can help with either additional signage or um, just publicity from our social media and marketing channels, we're here to help you with that. But it's really, it's really been impressive the way everybody has stepped up and it's a reminder of what an incredible team we have around us as elected leaders that we can rely on them and trust their expertise in getting us through these uh, choppy waters. So that's all I have for the mayor's report tonight. Are there any reports from the older persons? Mayor Lysak. Alderman Lysak. I move for approval of the minutes of the Common Council meeting of March 3rd, 2020. Second. There's a motion with a second by Alderman Vitale. Are there any changes to the minutes? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Minutes are approved. I'll ask for a motion to place item four on file and refer item five to the city attorney. So moved. Second. There's a motion and a second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 All opposed? The motion carries. Um, item K, standing committee reports. Mayor Devine, I will report those out after the recess meetings. Thank you. Mr. Mayor, just Attorney Decker, Sorry. if you don't mind, uh, there was a request from an elder person for a referral to committee for item 15 that was on the license and health uh, agenda. Okay. So if it's if in the interest, I think Alderman wrote could just simply say so moved to refer that matter to committee and with a second and a affirmative <coughs> vote, Thank it would you. occur. Okay. So moved. Second. second. There's a motion and a second. Back to committee. Um, then on the balance, or is that a vote? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anybody opposed? Okay, the item is referred back to committee. Um, Alderman Lysak. Second. There's a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? We are in recess.